into yes, the we'll discussion of evil thoughts. It is a hadith that has been recorded by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. The transmitter of the hadith is Hazrat Abu Huraira, Rabbi Allah Ta'ala. And Abi Huraira, Rabbi Allah Ta'ala, called Allah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. إن الله تجاوز عن أمتي ما وسط به صدرها ما لم تعمل به أو تتكلم أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. Translation it is related by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه. The Messenger of Allah said, Allah has forgiven my ummah evil thought and misgivings. And there will be no punishment on them until they are acted upon or uttered by the tongue. <laughs> Under the topic of waswasas, uh, we have discussed many different aspects, many different dimensions. Inshallah, tonight we would like to conclude the topic. Uh, so we are going to discuss one final dimension pertaining to evil thoughts. In the past we have made mention that the evil thoughts will be pertaining to our faith, the existence of Allah Almighty, the reality pertaining to life after death. As we all know that we have core beliefs so the first attack of the waswasa will be pertaining to the core beliefs. The second kind of waswasa, evil thought, uh, is uh, pertaining to a'mal sahih. Invite to contravene, to break the command of Allah Almighty. Alhamdulillah, we have discussed these two different kinds of waswasa in the past few weeks. Today we are going to speak about the waswasa pertaining to good deeds. Pertaining to good deeds. There is a shaitan and this shaitan has a name. The hadith is from Tirmazi. His name is Walham. Walham. He's a shaitan, and his sole duty is to create waswasa when a person is performing wudu. So his goal in life is to create waswasa when the noble person is making preparation for the establishment of prayer. So what Walhan will do is that a person will think that he has completed his wudu. But after completing his wudu, a thought will come to mind. And the thought will be that I think I did not wash my arm um, or I think I did not make us on my head or I did not wash my feet or a certain part of the four body parts has been left dry. So if he entertains this waswasa, he will return back and he will start making wudu. He will start making wudu. The more he entertains this waswasa of walhan, the jinn, the shaitan walhan, the more he will become weak. And in proportion to his weakness, walhan becomes stronger. That's how it works. So walhan becomes stronger. The person becomes weak. So Nabi Akhiri Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew about this shaitan that disturbs the wudu of a noble person. 
So if we study the seerah of Nabi Akrim Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will come to know that there were people that were affected by waswasas amongst the Sahaba Allah alayhi wa ajma'in. So Nabi Akrim Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was the fountain of wisdom, he came up with treatments that allow them to gain control of themselves. So one example, there was a person that came to Nabi Akhiri Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, whenever I pray, I feel that my wudu breaks. I always believe that whilst I'm praying, my wudu breaks. So the shaitan did not get the better of him in wudu. So he let him do his wudu. But he came to visit him when he was praying. He came to visit him when he was praying. And whenever he used to pray, the thought came to mind that I had broken my wudu. So most probably, he goes and makes wudu again and he prays. And there's a revisit of the same shaitan. So Nabi Akhiri Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi knew that there is no substance pertaining to this scenario that truly breaks his wudu. So this is a waswas. So what did Nabi Akhiri Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi say to this Sahabi? And this is khas, particular to the Sahabi. This is not a aam, this ruling is not for the message. It is not a general rule. So the scholars of Hadith, they will determine that the message of the Hadith, is it khas or am? Is it pertaining to this one person or is the ruling that is in this Hadith for the public? So Nabi Akhrim said to this Sahabi, and this is only for this Sahabi, People should not misunderstand. The Nabi of Allah said to the Sahabi that if you do not smell the passing of wind, or if you do not hear the passing of the wind, you will consider yourself to be in the state of purity. So the Nabi of Allah gave him a remedy that will allow him to gain control and the more he gains control, the lesser the waswasa get the better. Now many people that study Quranic verses or study a hadith of Mubaraka without proper competent teachers, they will falter in the understanding of the Quran and the hadith. A person will read the a hadith of Mubarak and he will come across this and he may take a ruling from the apparent words that if I don't smell the passing of the wind or if I don't hear it but I know that I have passed wind who doesn't break but that is not the maqsad and the purpose and the reason for the statement anyway Nabi Akrim addressed the situation of this one person. Now let's come back to the waswasa of wudu. The waswasa of wudu. How do we counter this? Because we're going to speak about different facets of life that are affected by displaying weakness, or let me use another word, or by allowing Wallahan to get the better of you in wudu. There are other facets that will open up to the shayapi and they will get the better of you in many many different departments of life. So what we need to do is we need to understand one thing. The shaitan Wallahan is trying his best to derail us from fulfilling our wudu and he knows and he has experienced 
And he has only been given one duty, so he has attained expertise and excellence in this. That the more this person allows me in, the lesser chance he has in time to come to fulfill the wudu. At the time he comes, he will forget. He will say, this is too hard. I can't finish my wudu. So he will not even pray. He will not even pray. So we need to understand one thing. That we are praying to please Allah Almighty. We are praying to please Allah Almighty. We are performing wudu to please Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty has demanded perfection. We are speaking about this in our Jumu'ah, Qutbah, Liyabluwakum, Ayyukum, Ahsanu, Amala. Allah has demanded perfection. But at the same time, there are limitations to all the actions that we perform. So I'm going to speak, I'm going to relate one hadith pertaining to wudu. The entry level, the moderate level, and the highest level pertaining to washing our body parts in wudu. We should not go below the entry level and we should not go beyond the high level. Does it make sense? So the hadith has been recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad Ahmad on the authority of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah in which Nabi Ali Muhammad sallallahu said Man tawadwa'a wahidatan fatilka wadhifata al-wudu Allati la budda bitha Wa man tawadwa'a ithnatay falahu kifla Wa man tawadwa'a thalatan fadalika wudu'i wa wudu'u al-abdiya qabli aw kama sala alayhi salatu al-salam So there are three levels that the Nabi of Allah has made mention and we can clearly identify by the translation. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said a person who perform wudu by washing each limb once has fulfilled the requirement of wudu. So if he washes his face once, washes his arms once, washes his feet once, wipes his head once, and we only wipe once anyway. فَتِلْكَ وَضِيْفَةُ الْوُدُوءُ أَلَّتِ لَا بُدَّ مِنْهَا The Prophet of Allah says, his wudu will be accepted. Let me stop here and make mention, as long as washing the face once has allowed the entire face to be washed. So no part of the face is left dry. The same rule applies to the arms. The same rule applies to the feet. Then the Nabi of Allah says, and he who cleanses each limb, yani he washes each limb twice, gets two parts of reward. So his reward will be multiplied by two compared to washing the body parts once. That is the moderate level. Then the Nabi of Allah says, and he who washes each limb three times has performed my wudu and the wudu of the prophets before me. So the maximum time you can wash any body part in wudu is three. Beyond three becomes israf, becomes extravagance, and basically it will fall under wasted water. And Nabi Akrim has given us instructions of wisdom in the following statement: Iyaka wa sarf wa in kunta ala naharin jarin au kama kala alayhi salatu salam. Say guard yourself from extravagance from some even if you are sitting beside a flowing river so what do we learn from this wudu of the prophets that if one person has washed his face three times washed his arms three times washed his feet 
three times, wiped his head once, exited the wudu khana, and Walhan comes to visit him, he should say to him, this is the wudu that I can do. It may be imperfect, but I am going to perform my salah. Disregard the waswasa of Walha and don't give him any importance. Go ahead and perform the salah with the wudu, that is the wudu of the prophets, even if the mind is saying that your wudu is not accepted. I am praying for Allah Almighty, Allah will accept. Allah will accept this wudu. I don't care. Now, let me retract and start over from the beginning and begin to apply this to Salah in a few moments. Important topic. I go to perform wudu. I have never ever experienced waswasa in wudu. Never ever. But today, something strange happened. I made wudu and whilst I was making wudu, waswasa came. Yani walhan put a doubt in my mind. Okay. Well, huh? put a doubt in my mind. So it's a one-off thing, never experienced before. The scholars say that if it is only once, then repeat the wudu. But if this is reoccurring, disregard it after washing the body parts three times. Now let's apply this to salah. Many a times. There are waswasas that come to us in salah. And basically not only waswasas, the shaitan is working overtime. So our ta'alluq can break with Allah Almighty in salah. Overtime. So much so there is a beautiful story uh, related uh, in the time of the tabi'i. And I have read the name of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, that there was a person. He had buried a treasure. And somehow he forgot where he buried the treasure. He forgot. He said, I had a treasure, I buried it, but I forgot where I buried it. So he went to different people and he said, is there any way that I can remember where I buried the treasure? So no one could give him an answer that was conclusive and satisfying. Somehow he made it to Imam Abu Hanifa, Nurman bin Thabit, Rahimahullah. And Imam Abu Hanifa said, start praying. Because Ista'inu bi sabat wa You seek the assistance, the help of Allah Almighty through salah and patience. So you pray and inshallah Allah Almighty will guide you. Something will come your way that will allow you to remember. So he starts praying. Following day, he comes to Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. He said, whilst I was praying, I remembered. Whilst I was praying, I remembered. So I could not contain myself in the prayer, so I broke my salah. And I ran to the treasure. Because I was afraid that I may forget again. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah says that basically it was the shaitan that knew where you buried because the shaitan is around. He knew where you buried and he could not tolerate you praying continuously. So to stop you from praying, he reminded you where you buried the treasure. And you gave him the satisfaction by not completing the prayer. And that's why many a times that we forget things that are not in our mind, they will come to visit us in salah. The lost thoughts, the lost knowledge comes to visit us in salah. And basically it is the waswasa of the shaitan trying to break the ta'alluq, the communication. And that's why the very famous incident, the Imam, he makes salah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
And now there's confusion amongst the Muqtadis. It was Salat al Asr. There was a confusion amongst the Muqtadis. Half of the congregation say that Imam Sahib, you prayed three raka'at, three units. The remaining half say that you prayed four units. But no one was absolutely certain. One person stood up and he said, Imam Sahib, you have prayed four units, not three. And I'm absolutely certain. So Imam Sahib said, how are you certain? He said, I got four shots. I made the hisab of one shot in the first raka'at. The second shop in the second rakah, the third shop in the third rakah, and the fourth shop in the fourth rakah, and basically I made the hisab of all shops, so I know you pray four rakah. <laughs> so this is how the mind wanders in salah. So when the mind wanders, as I gave an example, that we take off by saying Allahu Akbar in Jumu'ah, and in that flight we take another flight. In that flight, you take another flight. And when the flight lands and there's a jerk, you wake up. Oh, assalamu alaikum. That's what happens. So when this is the state of the mind in salah, it is easy for the shaitan to create waswasas. Because the mind is not attentive. When the mind is attentive, there's less chance for the shaitan to inject any scruple, any doubt, any wasmasa, any evil thought. So, the scholars have said that if a person becomes confused, first time, and if I pray three or four, and he can't really determine that, so he gave entry to the evil thought or the wasmasa, so he should repeat the salah. The fuqah said, if it is the first time, repeat the salah. But if this is reoccurring, then basically if the confusion is between three and four, choose the lesser number. Consider yourself that you have prayed three, continue, and at the end make the sajda sahab. So that is the rule. Now if a person does not control these waswasas in the primitive stages, in the early stages, these become strong. I may mention these are not only going to visit us in our ibadah, they can even destroy our bond of marriage. We have seen people that have allowed the walhan or allowed the shaitan to cause fitna, waswasa in wudu and salah, it does not stop them. Because a person has given it, he has become weak. So now what happens? The shaitan will cause doubts in the mind pertaining to the loyalty of his wife. Because he becomes weak. He will always doubt his wife. He will always doubt the people that he is socializing with. Because he's weak in the mind. That weakness has to flow. It has to come out. And that weakness will be across the board. And that's why people that do not address this issue early on, they live a isolated life. I may mention one of the teachers in Raimi, my teacher was Qari Abdul Azizah, Rahmatullahi who passed away, his cousin who was in the other class, a teacher, Momana Ilyas was his name, Hafiz Ilyas. He died because of this one harm. Walahan, he died because of Walahan. That was the apparent reason. That the scholar said to him, you washed your body about three times, that's it. You know, you washed your body, that's it, three times. Disregard everything. He didn't disregard it. And I was very young, I was only 10 or 11 years of age. I remember that he used to change his clothes. He used to perform wudu maybe 10 or 15 times for one prayer. He used to stand up and see that his clothes are wet. When he made wudu, they're wet. One heart did not stop on this that your body part is not washed. He took it to the next level that the wetness on your clothes is basically impurity. So he used to go and make ghusl, change his clothes. I remember he was a healthy person 
in six to seven years, he became like a matchstick. And then he died. The young person died. And very, very, as we say, Urdu Shakti. Very, very Shakti. Always doubting people around him. So this is a serious problem. We're praying for Allah Almighty, we are making wudu for Allah Almighty, and Allah Almighty is such that He will give us complete reward and perfection, but He will not disregard imperfection as well. So I would like you for your own satisfaction, if anyone is countering this problem, to study the verse from the very famous section of Surah Ali Imran. It is the last ruku section of the surah and it is a section that Nabi Akrima has desired that his ummah recite before going to sleep in the Fiqh al from verse 190 to 200 if you go to verse 195 Allah Almighty says and this gives satisfaction to that person that is being charged by the heart of the shaitan to make him weak. What does Allah Almighty say? Your efforts, may you be a male or a female, will never be wasted. Allah always will accept your effort, even if it is weak. And that's why we know. Think about it. Allah Akbar. And in the entire prayer, we don't think about Allah once. That's it. We don't think about Allah once. And we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You go to the Mufti Sahib. And you say, Mufti Sahib, I didn't remember Allah once. My mind was somewhere. My speech was somewhere. But I completed the prayer. Is my salah accepted? He would say it's accepted. You have discharged the salah. Indeed, it will be devoid of reward. But you have discharged your salah. If it was a person who was to accept and reject, he would say, rejected. You didn't even talk to me once. Salah is to talk with me. You were there physically, but by thought, by spirit, you were not there. So rejected. But Allah does not reject. So keep that in mind. This is very, very important pertaining to the waswasa. Now, one thing is, number one, disregard it and believe that Allah will accept. If you don't, it's going to be problematic for yourself in time to come. The second remedy from the Quran is recital of Mu'awwadatay, the last two surahs, 113, 140 in abundance. Huh? Surah Falaq, Surah Naat, Nas, Muhammad, the thing, 130, 140, recite in abundance. The recital of these two surahs make you stronger spiritually, mentally, and it gives less chance for the shaitan to make entry. Does it make sense? Now, another thing pertaining to waswasas, normally we find that waswasa comes our way when we are in salah. Mind wanders. It keeps moving away. And it's very hard to make a U-turn. Once the mind goes, it's hard to make a U-turn. So the scholars have said there are three things you need to do. And these are three levels. Three levels of wudu I just made mention of, you remember? Wash it once, wash it twice, wash it three times. Maximum is three times. There are three levels that we need to be mindful in the establishment of prayer. And if we can be mindful of these three levels, inshallah, it will not allow the waswasa any entry. Number one, focus upon the words that you are reciting. The scholars have said, for Arabs and non-Arabs, even if you know the language, it doesn't mean that you will not be visited by evil thoughts. So this applies to all. That the words, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, 
should be visual in your mind. Visual in your mind. It's like a screen they're moving. Alhamdulillah. Number one, this is the first level. That's the first level. After attaining this level, now if a person is looking at the words in his mind, the mind has no room for waswas. The mind has no room for waswas. But there's a certain component of the mind and that is the intellectual side of the mind that has not been activated. Because you're just visualizing it. That component that is intellectual has not been activated. So the second level is that the words that you are seeing in your mind, you think about the meaning as well. Focus upon the meaning of those words and that will stop waswasa coming through the intellectual part of the mind. Does that make sense? The meaning. And once these two combine and a person that can attain this collectively, then the third level inshallah will come. And that third level has been made mention in Hadith al Jibreel. Ummul Hadith. And ta'bud Allah. كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ That a person worships Allah Almighty as he is seeing Allah and if he cannot bring himself to that muqam of spirituality then he should at least believe that Allah is watching him. But this will not happen if a person does not establish the first two steps. A person cannot walk until he sits and a person cannot run until he walks so there are steps that need to be placed and I may mention in Jumu'ah to eliminate the chance of being derailed by waswasas in Salah is a perfect ablution to be in the state of purity so it starts well, well before the establishment of wudu. Well, well before the establishment of salah. That when we go to the baytul khala, when we go to the toilet, we should be mindful how we are urinating, how we are defecating, how are we applying the laws of purity after relieving ourselves. Very important. Because if we stand up from after we relieve ourselves and we have not properly made istinja or cleaned ourselves then that impurity that is of the body will come to haunt us in the physical form of muslims and that's why Nabi Akhidi Muhammad said Miftaqu salah at the key to salah is purity because the external impurity will make the internal mind impure. So the zahir has an impact upon the body, and the body has an impact upon the body. Does it make sense? So this was what I wanted to discuss in regards to waswasas. So waswasa of aqida, waswasa of invite to haram, and waswasa of ibadah. And then the fourth one, waswasa pertaining to daily life. But we need to nip it in the mouth. We need to address it very, very early so it doesn't grow. Because it has the potential to grow from strength to strength. As you plant a seed, if you water it, after one, two years, you see a mighty tree. Likewise, the waswasa starts as a seedling. And if we water it by entertaining it, it grows as a tree and it takes over the entire internal and it disturbs every single facet of life. Tonight was the last program pertaining to hadith. Um, tomorrow night I'm leaving for Umrah. Uh, so you make dua that Allah Almighty accept. Uh, you don't have to say it, uh, it's very easy for me to make dua for you because I say all my students and they say Ya Allah all my students and you are all included 
And basically, when I make dua every day, I say Monday program, Tuesday program, Wednesday program, Friday program, Sunday program, my Juma. You are all included in that. So you will get a part of my dua each time, inshallah, I make dua. Now, the next program uh, will uh, start in the second week of March, but inshallah, you will get the message through the WhatsApp. Um, what else? Make a dua, inshallah. Right, inshallah.